Okay, another video where I was upgrading my Dell Precision T5400. Somebody asked me in the question section about the fan noise and what he can do about the fan noise. He said it's too loud. And I started to reply, but then I realized he may have an issue with it. So I'm going to make a video on stuff that could be making your fan louder than it should be. Because by default, these machines, yes, you can hear them, but they're pretty quiet. Unless they have an issue. Now, when you first turn them on, you'll usually hear the fan rip up mm, back down. If it doesn't go back down, there's a problem. If you're using it and all of a sudden you hear mm, or whatever, um, there's a problem. I'm going to go over what could be causing them problems. Firstly, make sure you've got enough room in the back, at least four inches, so it can breathe. Don't have it right up against the wall. Secondly, make sure that you've you've cleaned it out. That that uh, you know, it's not completely filled up with dust bunnies. All right. Now, see how I took that door off? Well, not always. It doesn't always shut all the way on the back here. So what happens is this is your system intrusion button. Okay, just a little button here. See? And it'll get to where, let me get this wire. Come on, wire it down there. It won't quite mash. And that, if it thinks the cover's off, then it thinks it can't get proper air because it's wide open. It thinks it can't flow air through it properly. So it revs the fans up. It's a safety thing. These systems are designed to protect yourself, and they do a really good job of it. So when you spin this fan, this system's no wider than a standard computer case, but the fan is a huge fan. It's extremely wide, and the 7400 is even bigger. Of course, it has a bigger case. But anyway, when you get that big, massive fan turning, you're going to hear some noise. So we've got to find out what's causing the noise. And that's your most likely culprit. It thinks it's open. That button don't have to be all the way out. Just out a little bit. And it makes contact, and it'll think the cover's off. Speed your fan up. So make sure your cover's gone up good. But your switch itself might be bad. Now, you can turn that switch off in BIOS. Um, what you do, though, is you turn your machine on. You hold the button, and then turn your machine on. And then release the button. Or your machine may be on, and you want to open the case. Your machine should start revving up. Your, your fan should speed up when that button isn't mashed in. So that's the way to test to see if your button's working. But if you do want to turn it off, your button's defective or whatever, um, you can go in the BIOS and turn it off. Okay, so let it breathe. Then you got the button issue. Clean it out. Now you can reach in here. There's a little blue piece of plastic here. This releases these. But this right here, pull it towards you. You can lift up on the cover. And when you lift up on the cover, that allows you to get to all this stuff. And then you would pop this up and you can pop this off. All right. Blow all this stuff out. Okay. Now, a lot of people get in little bottles of compressed air. I just use my air compressor, you know, with a blower and make sure I put back enough that it don't blow too hard. You want to make sure this isn't clogged up with wires right here and you want to blow that out. Okay. Now, of course, do all this at your own risk. Anyway, <clears throat> and, and don't be blowing it out while it's plugged up. Anyway, you want to make sure the air can flow. This stuff right here can get all kinds of junk in it. You know, over time it builds up, so blow it out. Make sure this isn't too cluttered up. And like I say, blow that out. So you've got the switch, you've got the, the breathing. Then I take and I change the CMOS battery on the motherboard here. A couple of dollars you can change that. Because a lot of times if your system CMOS battery goes bad, not necessarily this model, but a lot of computers, well, act weird. They'll boot up really slow or they won't boot up properly or something, something, something. Just a lot of little little issues. If your computer starts acting just just weird, change your CMOS battery. A lot of times that'll fix it. Okay. Now, when you change the CMOS battery the first time you boot it up after you do it, it's still going to be weird for that one time. You know, a lot of times. Sometimes it'll be right, but a lot of times it, well, it still has to, it's like you slap them upside the head and they kind of lose their memory and they got to find everything they need to work. That's what the CMOS battery makes sure it still has the, the power to remember everything. Um, so when you change the battery, it's still got to find it that first time again. But then after that, it should remember because it has a new battery. Okay. Now, 
He said it's got 32 gigs of RAM in it and he changed the processors. That might be the issue. The 32 gigs of RAM, first of all, you got to make sure that they're seat. You know, I always pop mine out, put them back in. A lot of times I blow the little, you know, grooves out and then put them back in because they may not have a set right when they put them in. Make sure both ends are snapped in. A lot of times you'll, you'll miss on one and it won't be quite snapped in. Make sure your RAM is, is seated good, in other words. But your processors, he may have changed them out, and when he put the thermal paste on, he might have put the wrong kind of thermal paste and it's not working properly. But even professionals can put thermal paste on there and it not quite cover like it's supposed to. And if it does that, your processor will start trying to overheat. It'll, it'll, it'll cause it to rev the fans up. So check that, get you some good thermal paste, and redo that, and you and should be good. Now here's the thing, a lot of people say, well, I've got a brand new machine, um, I used it for several years, but I've never changed processors, so that's not it. That could be it. They get old, and the thermal paste can get dried up so much that it doesn't conduct heat properly, and you may just need to wipe the old stuff off, put some new thermal paste on, and there you go, you're good to go. <clears throat> so it could be that. So, again, you want your system to be cleaned out where it can breathe good, dust, wires in the way, all kinds of stuff like that. You want it to, the button to work, CMOS better change, your memory reseated, and your processors, make sure the um, thermal paste is good on them. Make sure the heat sink is actually setting down like it's supposed to, depending on the computer. Sometimes they don't sit down. Now, these do a pretty good job, but some models don't. <clears throat> and you should be go, good to go. Now, you could have issues beyond that. You could have some of the caps on your motherboard maybe cracking, you know, splitting up in the top, stuff like that, <clears throat> which this one actually has. This one's got about four caps that are <clears throat> swelled up, but it still works. You know, again, these machines were built pretty well, so they can handle a lot of stuff, even that. Now, that don't mean they're all going to do it, but this one's holding up pretty good. Now, you may be thinking, well, it's got bad caps. That computer's not good. What's he talking about? Yeah, well, you don't know what this machine has been through either. It, this machine should have been in the in the uh, recycle bin a long time ago, <clears throat> but it just keeps on kicking. Anyway, uh, there's that. A lot of times it's just where people let so much junk build up in their system, it'll overheat. They've got, they got them where they can't breed. They'll push them right up against the walls and, and uh, so on and so forth. Now, this particular one... <clears throat> Um, I always leave my computers under under the, the table. I get a table. I don't use a regular computer desk. My table's five feet wide and about 30 inches deep. Gives me a lot of room. And I put the computer under. Well, that allows me to, I can still reach it, but that quiets it down some there as well. Also, he mentioned upgrading. Okay, this is a T5400. Then you had the T5500. This was DDR2 memory, uh, PCI Express 2, um, video card slot. The 5500 had uh, DDR3 memory, but I may be wrong, but D uh, it still had the PCI Express 2 slot. Memory is a little bit faster bus speed. Then you had the uh, T or, or the 5800, Precision 5800. Well, it was DDR3 memory um, as well, but it had the PCI Express 3 slot. Then you had the, the 5810. That's where they went to DDR4 in the PCI Express 3 slot. Well, that's the one I've got because it has the DDR4 memory. It's 31 or 2133 memory. And I believe it can actually go up one more step, but that's, that's a good memory. Whereas the DDR3 memory maxed out at 1600 megahertz. This one bottoms out at 1600. The slowest one you can put in at the uh, 5810 is uh, 1600, but you can go up to, I think it's 2400. Um, I've even seen some 2666 as an option. I don't know. I, I, I stay with the 2133 because that's, that's your best one really for them. So you can upgrade. Now there's like three or four generations after that as far as that goes. Um, but here's the thing. I wanted it new enough to where it was worth the upgrade and uh, old enough to where you can get a good bargain because when you go to the very next models, price goes up. Now the drawback is that machine only holds one processor, but these these can hold up to a dual quad cores or eight cores. 
the 5810 can hold a single processor, but I've got a 10 core 23 ad processor in a 2.6 gigahertz. But it, I know it'll hold a 14, and I believe it'll hold a, I mean a 12, and I believe it'll hold a 14. Thing is, when you jump into those, the price goes way up, and then you know you got to split the difference because the megahertz didn't want to go down with the more cores. Well, the minimum I wanted to go to was a, um, <clears throat> a 2.6. Really, you could you could say now if you're rendering and stuff, a two gigahertz is good, but if uh, if you want to, you know, actually run more stuff, let's say you want to run some games or something, that's why I got the 2.6. And uh, uh, even games that say 2.8 would probably run on it. But I didn't get the system for gaming. But regardless, it, it could probably do that too. So that's why I got that. And I didn't pay all that much for it. I forget what it was, like $300. But then I upgraded the memory. I think it had 8 gigs in it. And then I also upgraded the processor. I think it had a 4-core processor in it. <clears throat> but uh, I, I I think it's a 680 because they've got like a a 480, a six, and then like a like an 860 or whatever. Um, I don't know the exact numbers. I'd have to look it up. But I got the six 680 watt. You know, you don't want to get the the 400 one. You want to make sure unless you're going to upgrade the power supply anyway. Now this is a 5400, but I'm talking about the 5810. If you're going to use that one, make sure you get at least a, the one that's in the 600 watt range on the on the power supply. <clears throat> or above. There's one above it. An 800 something. And that's 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 your options. Um, but the machine should not be real loud at the end of the day, that's what I'm saying. And like I say, you could always stick it under your desk or something. I don't know the desk you've got, but if you can put it down there where you can still reach the CD-ROM, so on and so forth. And of course, the power button, that might be an option. 